Hi everyone, my name's Anne Marie. Welcome to Card Making Project 555. It's Friday, so it's Christmas, and I've got to say today's card is an absolute stunner. And it uses our anagraphing supplies in a slightly different way. There's a great technique in here, and there's a great uh, versatile use of some dyes. And I just think the colours of it and the overall design is an absolute stunner. Please check my blog for all the details of the items that we've used and lots of photos as well of both inside and outside of the project. It's great hearing from you so you can always comment on Facebook, you can always leave me a message on Facebook and you can comment on YouTube as well. So please check this project out. I think it is just one of the greats of this year. Give me the thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and please share with your crafty friends. Let's sit back and relax and let's have a look at today's gorgeous project. For today's project we're going to be using the Anna Griffin Christmas Arrangement Embossing Folders and Die Set. Now this is an old item. We're going to be using the embossing folder called Snowfall. Now it matches perfectly to the dies that were also in the collection and we're going to be using the snowflake die. Last year we made a gorgeous Christmas card using the actual tree but this year we're going to use this snowflake die. Now there's quite a lot of die cutting involved in this one and there's some clever techniques in it. Kind of mixing and matching different dies together to get different effects and I think this is it's um, a quick and easy card but it's a clever how you get to the, you achieve the end, if that makes sense. So we're going to use a snowflake and we're also going to use the Christmas shadow box die, just the actual front of the shadow box. And then we're also going to use the ruffle cut and emboss dies. And we're going to use the actual shadow layer for the large ruffle and we're going to use the oval, the inner oval die. We're not going to actually use the ruffles themselves. So it's just the large shadow die and then the oval and you'll see what I mean as we go along and that's why it's very clever how it fits together with two completely different die sets. If you don't have these die sets, if you don't have the shadow box die, you would be able to substitute it and use the ruffle and use it just a little bit differently without one of the layers. So it would still work. However, I just find this is kind of, well, I'm going to say clever again, how it all goes together. I think you're going to like this one and this will give you lots of ideas. I might have just repeated myself from the intro, but um, it is. I'm starting off with my base card, which is a 7 by 5 inch card, and it's just in ivory. On the back of it, I've used my handmade stamp, I've stamped it, and I've added my name. I've added the project number and the date, just because it keeps me in check of knowing which project's which, for when it's coming out and when you see it. I'm going to use my Anna Griffin bone folder from the tool collection just to make sure that that crease on the edge of the card is nice and sharp so it looks nice and professional when it's stood on a mantelpiece. And as always we're going to do the inside first. Now the first thing that I've got for the inside is a layer of ivory cardstock and I've embossed it using the snowflake embossing folder. I think it was called Snowfall. Let me just double check. The embossing folder, Snowfall. So I've embossed it using um, the Snowfall embossing folder and then I've inked the edges and I've heat embossed it. So you can see that shine. And it looks like I've inked it really badly because I've left the middle uninked. I don't particularly want the middle inked because we've got something for that. But I've left it embossed. I haven't taken it back through the machine to give it a double pressing to flatten it down on this occasion. I need to find a word to describe 
you know when we emboss and then we flatten it so it's like a flat emboss we need to find a word that um, makes that work that we can adapt and use so that's for the first layer of the inside I've used um, an olive green ink pad and it was quite a dry one and it just it looks a little bit vintagey and I just I like it with the clear heat embossing uh, and the clear powder that gives it that shine I've got flat tape on the back of it and it's sized to a little bit about I'm saying a little bit about a quarter of an inch smaller than the inside of the card so we're just going to position that inside and press it down next layer is the inside oval of the shadow box layer that when you die cut it it takes out an oval from the inside I've die cut it for the front and this is the oval that was left so this is just on plain ivory cardstock I've got flat tape on the back and I'm simply just going to position that through the centre of the card where the patch of non-embossing was and press it down. Now even though it's going on embossing, I've pressed it down and my tape is quite sticky so that isn't going anywhere now. Our next layer is a gold oval. Now this is the oval that is the centre from the oval of the ruffle layer so it's kind of a different oval shape if you can see that it doesn't run strictly to the same oval distance however it still works so I've used silver satin uh, silver satin I've used gold satin cardstock I tell you, as soon as that camera goes on, my mouth and brain do not function. Gold satin cardstock for this oval, and it's on flat tape, and I'm just going to position it over the ivory oval centre and press it down. Now, for anyone dubious about using gold as the insert, you would still be able to write on that. I probably wouldn't use my fountain pen. I use a fountain pen a lot to write. Um, I would use um, just a normal biro, a good, you know, ink pen. Just a normal pen to, if you're writing on the gold. But not my fountain pen because I think it would smudge on there. I've not tried it, I should do. Um, so then, our last item for the inside is a sticker that I've got from the, um, just looking at my little list here, Holiday Trimmings. This was a card making kit from a few years ago from Anna and I've got some of the sentiments left over. So this says peace and joy and it's going to work really well with the rest of our card. And I'm going to position it I was going to put it in the centre, but I'm thinking I'm going to put it just at the bottom. I kind of like this positioning where they're at the bottom. And I'm going to press it down. I've left it as a 3D sticker. We've got layers on the front. It's not going to make an awful lot of difference to the post in having that one little layer. And it's all going to merge in anyway with the, I'm going to say bulk from the front with the height and the weight. So that's our insert complete. If you don't use the gold, use it in reverse. But I've used the waste that we're going to use for the front of the card. And I think that's a pretty insert. You know, that does look as though you've taken time and effort to make something very different. And I just think it's a good idea. Okay, so the front of our card. Now I'm just using my bone folder to make sure that that edge is nice and sharp because I want the card to be able to sit flat to begin with. Our first layer is a layer of ivory cardstock 
that have embossed using our snowfall embossing folder from the Christmas arrangement set. I've got flat tape on the back of it and you might notice there's four die cut snowflakes out of the centre of this. Now this is where we start with good ideas and the four snowflakes have been die cut out of the centre and I know it looks a little bit odd but go with it because you are going to like this, I promise you. I'm going to position it to the centre of the card and press it down. Now the four snowflakes that have been die cut out of the embossed layer I am now going to fill with four snowflakes that I've die cut from gold um, satin cardstock. These are on flat um, tape, so a flat glue. When I say flat tape, for my friends across the pond that's like flat glue or a tape runner, it's just not 3D. So I've got four die cut snowflakes in the gold that are sitting nicely in the, those apertures. So this is kind of like idea number one. So add the fourth one. There we go. Press that down. Our next layer is the shadow layer from the ruffle using the blank oval to cut out the centre. You remember the centre for the insert? So that's the shadow layer and the oval to cut out what you would cut out to use for the ruffle. This is on 3D foam and it's going to go over the centre of our snowflakes in the centre. Press it down. Our next layer, now this is, I think this is the clever bit. I've die cut the shadow box frame. I've then used the shadow layer from the ruffle kit to take the centre out. So I have literally die cut the ornate layer and then taken the shadow layer from the ruffle cut and die cut that section to get our next layer. I hope that makes sense. And now I've stuck my layer to the back of my dies. There we go. Panic over. So that's how I got this layer. And this is going to fit perfectly over our previous layer because it's exactly the same size because it's the same die. So I'll just press that down. The only difference is the inner, set, the inner oval is different because we've used a different oval to get that effect. The oval from the inner is the smaller oval from the ruffle because the outer one is from the shadow box. So it gives it a shadowed effect, if that makes sense. And I think that is just, you know, a great idea that could be adapted for so many of your cards. Next, this is where our die cutting comes in. Lots of die cutting. I've cut out eight gold stars and I've just got them on flat tape and I'm going to position them just around the edge in no particular, you know, I'm not being careful, I'm just adding them. And then the last two, and we lift that a bit. And then I've cut out four ivory ones. These ivory ones are the original ivory 
from the base of the first layer. These are on 3D foam and I'm just going to simply add them over the top of the gold snowflakes that we've just added. And look how pretty that looks. Now we've got a sentiment and this says Christmas greetings. Again, this is from the holiday trimming set. I've gone OTT with the 3D foam on the back. I don't ask me why. When I've just come to prep it now and I thought, oh, why have I put so much on? I've no idea. So we can add that through the centre of the oval like that so the snowflakes are just peeking out from behind it and then I've got a little gold bow that's going to sit underneath and that is our card finished and I just think that is such a pretty card I love the layers I love the gold and the ivory and those snowflakes just work such a great card for ideas from the layers at the bottom where we've added the snowflakes as kind of like flat apertures where we've cut the ovals from the different dies stands up perfectly that is going to be a winner on any mantelpiece for your postage you Maybe going to get away with a normal envelope, but might need a fat mail or I, I don't know. I think that would go in a normal one, um, just with maybe a bit of padding. It's just such a beautiful card. You're going to send that to somebody special anyway, so that little bit of extra postage is going to be worth it. Now, I'll tell you one idea. It's just come to me, just as we've been talking. Wouldn't that be great as a shaker? Put all that together and a piece of acetate and the shaker in there as well. And as you're moving it, because you've got the depth of the layers. Oh, such a pretty card. Please check my blog because I'm going to take lots of photos of this inside and out, as, all, as I do with all the projects. And I think this one will be a good one to refer back to, especially for the ideas of the die cutting and how we've used the two different collections to make the apertures and the frames for the outside for the snowflakes and those frames would work for any occasion because I know I've used it for Christmas there's nothing Christmassy on those frames as we've die cut them so that would work for any time of year um, it's just such a great card so please check my blog for other projects as well I hope you've enjoyed this and I'd just like to say thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.